All right, so we've gathered together for another session of Mithras, and we are in this location near or in view of a split granite peak seeking vengeance on Carl Ironarm, ostensibly the new warlord of a clan owing allegiance to the bear, to the thunder of the sky, to the mountain beneath our feet, and other things that some of its adherents can't quite recall. And we have with us Fritz again, still, and we have Ingvar again, and we will soon see the return of Brahm from session one. And this leaves us with the question of Elaine, which I will pose to you gentlemen. Shall we bring Elaine along with us for whatever should befall us? Or should we leave the prisoners behind to be guarded by Elaine? This is a, a just a way to make things easier for us. If you don't mind having him along to run as an NPC, then we can certainly bring him. But yeah, We need somebody to watch the prisoners. Yeah. All right, it is done. And some, somebody to survive, to tell our, yeah. the tale of our to glorious tell tale. ending. <laughs> <laughs> of our glorious deaths. And, and to clarify, to, to meta the thing, he's watching the prisoners with a pina colada right now. <laughs> <laughs> on vacation Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday was a corona but he made yeah. <laughs> it was apple juice i saw the picture it was a golden yeah. <laughs> liquid in a large beaker it couldn't be anything else other than that's right apple juice good deductive possibly, skills anthony possibly ginger ale <laughs> <laughs> all right so the last thing that had happened was the entire sky went black. The temperature had been dropping for days as you climbed higher and higher into the mountains, but even so, as the sky darkens, as the mountain rumbles, ostensibly with the voice of the god, as the ground beneath your feet shakes, the wilderness becomes still. The distant call of birds, even the, the dripping of droplets of water from icicles in the trees. Right? Even these things become still in that moment. You have the cooling corpse of Eric, shirt over his face, hands recently cut free, right? cooling in the snow as the light drifts begin to cover him over. In front of you, you have your new prisoner, the archer, in his gray clothing, which blends in so well with this stony, cold landscape. But as the sky darkens, it becomes so dark so as to make all of these details fade almost to nothingness. Almost as if you are blinded. And then as quickly as it came, it passes. The rumble of the mountain ceases, the thunder stops, and the sounds of wildlife return, including the sound of footprints, or footsteps, behind you in the uneven, rocky surface of this plateau beneath the major peak. I spin around, ready to kill. Yeah. Yes. And small, in the distance, coming out of the tree line, is Brom. And Dene. Brought her along. I think, I think technically she brought me along. <laughs> her face is set in a hard and decided line. Mm. 
So, what do you make of the streets? I don't know. He's. What the hell is he doing? What the hell are they doing? Oh. I'm not did waving. You know, <laughs> did, 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 did you know Brahm all your life? Yeah. I suspect that's something that you asked a lot while you were growing up. It is. Uh, so I just lean on my staff as they approach. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Danae marches up, which is not easy given the uneven shifting terrain, given the, the lichen which covers the rocks, which at any moment could slip, right? Anyone could lose their dignity. Anyone could lose their grace. But she marches a line across the rocks up to... Freets. She gives a slight nod to Ingvar and then punches Freets in the shoulder. What's that for? She points at the mountain. I don't understand. And she opens her mouth. She punches you again and points at the mountain. I think she wants to go there, Fritz. She gives you another nice nod. As I start to catch up, because I'm imagining she stormed ahead of me, and I'm like, well, okay, uh, I, guess we're, <laughs> I guess we're going this way. <laughs> I, I scramble up, and I say, Fritz, she's been like this the whole time. She, I, We tried to go back, and she is determined to come with us. So I give him this look that would melt granites. Uh, then they can and you were helpless before her, weren't you? Freach, you know her as well as I do. I do. I do. Uh, flinching, waiting for the third third blow. So I, I asked her if she can use a bow. Then I can use a bow. No. She shakes her head. She pats her dagger. Okay. We just happen to have a spare one, that's all. So shall we? So while this drama is playing out, you know, the man on the ground <laughs> is kind of looking from eye to eye. And he's looking quite appreciatively at the forcefulness of Diné. He says, You intend to go to the warlord? To Iron Arm? We do. What is your plan? So I kind of look at Ingvar. You know, because last last we left it, you know, uh, Elaine was was giving spinning the skies a story of like us wanting to join the band of uh, people it, that we haven't it, announced it, our, our intention to kill this guy. Yeah, but it suddenly doesn't seem believable with the lady missing her tongue angrily wanting to go there, right? <laughs> a little less. And can we assume I've been brought up to speed? Okay. Uh. Mm. So who wants to explain to me what plan A was? Like we had a plan. We just have a goal. And that's to end him. Right. Okay. okay. Correct. Which means you have just become an inconvenience, Archer. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yeah, so our plan was to march right up there and, and knock and, and say hello, unless you have a better idea. No, I, I, is there a reason that we're keeping him alive? 
I can help you. He inserts at that welcome opportunity. I can help you. You All have no ears. reason to trust me. I know. None. You shot an arrow at me. You blasphemed. You murdered a man in cold blood. Three on one. This time will be five. But... Hmm. It's been done before. Then this is a funny thing. So, what was your... Uh... I know how Iron Arm recruits. I know what he looks for. I've been through it. I can't claim to know what he wants. But I can help you. And and I'll stay here. So there's no chance of me betraying you. Well, it's you a little take, hard for you me. You can't to, take the woman. It's a little hard for me to understand because right now you're betraying him. And now you're going to say you're not going to betray us. He starts and stops several times. And he's looking <laughs> at the shattered statue of the bear. Right? His gaze, in a sense, draws others' gaze to it. It's so intense. And a ways off, near the corpse of Eric, is a large base of a statue. Quite large. The length of several men laying in width and uh, in depth and the height of a man intricately carved with all sorts of images of the life of the bear there are cubs and there are mother bears and there are raging grizzly bears and and hunting and fishing and sleeping and hibernating and and uh, all around the base of this and the the feet of a grizzly bear rearing up as if to claw the sky are still on the base but laying broken where it fell off the back of of this base is the the shattered remnant the huge remnant of this granite polished grizzly its head is rolled free of its shoulders its legs are broken at the thigh but at the thigh it's as tall as a man and his eyes keep going to it he says, my people are of the bear. And the warlord's priests have killed the bear to bind us together as the people of the mountain. Maybe so he, this is the will of the God, but I... So do you feel he, defi he defies the, the, the bear? Who could do this? All right, so you know how he recruits. So let's hear it. All who come for whatever reason to his hall must fight and if they fight and defeat his champion then they must beat him in some trick or contest for a chance to be regarded as a man, an adult. If they are defeated, then they become soldiers in his army. Mm -hmm. If they win? If they win, they become soldiers in his army, but with pride of place. A cut of the spoils. Has he been defeated before? I don't think so. 
and the people of the mountain are stripped of their treasures. They lie waiting for the time to attack the soft lowland where we will all become rich and wealthy, we will all become kings among men, for none can resist us. But he forgets that the hunters have seen the lowlands, where you come from. Which is a little bit of an unintentional insult because you're from the highlands. Right. <laughs> <laughs> mm, 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 mm. All right. Sounds like an excellent opportunity. But then uh, your friend couldn't join us. And I'm listening to, to Igvar, but really only talking to Fritz. Um, and uh, I say to Fritz, so this is what we'll do then? We'll go and bet ourselves and just find the opportunity? I'm sure Ingvar is a match for his champion, and I just kind of like smile, smirk a little bit, and raise my eyes on Ingvar. So that, I'm yeah. then going to turn to Danae and say, Danae, this is our only way of getting any retribution, and there's there's no place for you where we're headed. Um, the, the man on the ground kind of cuts in and says, "She bears the mark." She's been marked for the priests. She's marked as a sacrifice. None will let her walk free. Yeah. So if looks could kill, the look I'm giving him as he's speaking And that's how he feels too, right? Like he, he, he's, <laughs> he's cowering, but he also wants to offer information to save his own life. He has to tell the truth and... and you know, he's, he's just right. waiting for the boots to, to come. He's still lying there on the ground, right? He's still he's waiting for the boots to come in. And Yeah, no, it's definitely one of those moments where I'm glad he's told me, but I still want to, you know, to, <laughs> to kill him for saying this in front of her. And, uh, you know, so I, you know, that's really, lame. we're going to have to watch her. And if he does anything, kill him. Actually, if he does yeah. anything stupid, kill him. Don't just kill him. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you have to stay here. So, and and, and Elaine yeah, exactly. is with us right now. Is that correct? Elaine is here, and yeah. you know he's he's reminding us that if we don't act fast, then we'll be trapped up here in the mountains for the entire winter, and we'll be if we are are caught assassinating the leader. You know what what can our our fate possibly be? We're coming back anyway, Elaine. Yeah. Uh, Elaine is Elaine is the only one I would trust with this entire situation to keep to keep our uh, our buddy under control as well as <laughs> keep Danae under control. <laughs> so this gentleman is your first challenge, right? This is an opposed test, right? What's going to stop Danae? Only you stand between her and certain death. Okay. Contest of wills. Contest of something. What, what is the so contest this of? Be influence. This uh, influence is a very multi-purpose skill, uh, as it it factors into any form of influence, changing someone's position or mind, and it's typically resisted by willpower in an opposed check. Where Would it help for differing to, degrees to use to use our? Our oath. Could that give us a bonus? Our our uh, our love passion. No, we oh yes, our an, passion. We swore, yeah, we swore an oath to to uh, kill Carl or die in the attempt. Yeah. So, um, as you can't all talk at once, but you but some could interject and intercut. What I'm imagining is that there would be a lead for the role, who's primarily the one face to face with Danae, with the others supporting. Right? Um, and if you're in the support position, you would be contributing your skill, your 20% of your skill in influence, that you then boost with your passion if your passion role is successful. Right. So. If, for example, you're boosting it with your love passion, that's 54%, right? So 20% of that added 
to um, twenty percent of your skill added to the leads, uh, the leads percentage chance. If that Let Rom take the lead because she keeps hitting me. Yeah. So, <laughs> Rom spent a lot of time with her. Yeah, he talks more. So you want Brom to be the lead. Okay, so Brom would roll influence, and who will assist? I, I will assist. I'll, I'll interject for the tidbits. And I've actually rolled 24 under my passion. Uh, I think I'm, I'm staying out of it because I don't know this person. And... All right. So that's uh, 20% just... percent of 54. Okay. Yeah, a... Brings your influence up to 34%, is that right? I think so. Let's see. Well, no, I mean, I've done, I've done influence. I mean, I'm just giving you 20% of that skill as well, which is not much. So I'm giving you 24% of my passion plus 20, 20% of my passion plus 20% of my influence. Is that the, you got it. Correct. Okay. Okay. And normally cool. we'd have all these things worked out on our sheets. So, so we wouldn't have to calculate them. But. Right. right. So six, okay. that's 16%, which actually brings me up to 40. Does that yeah. sound right? All right. So that's not too bad. Yeah. Um, I kind of let uh, Fritz kind of set the table a little bit, um, kind of starting to make the case, and then I kind of pulled Danae aside um, and have a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her, and let's see how I do. It's a 33. Okay. And I get to resist. No. <laughs> She has a willpower of 10. <laughs> fail without my help. The only, only reason you want me to take the lead, Freets, is because <laughs> you find great joy in my failure. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Based on your memories of Danae, right? Her laughter, her ability to be empathic with people, uh, and her the fact that she could catch the eye of so many right, around her as being desirable indicates clearly that she has a, a quick mind, good intelligence, right? she understands and can relate to people. And so very quickly she gives in to the persuasion. She heard what the man said. She re heard what he revealed about, about her, her maiming and your chances and what Iron Arm will expect, and he's, she sees how concerned everyone is, and she gives in, and you know the storm clouds on her face clear. She's not going to make it difficult. She's not going to guilt you on your way. She's not going to, you know, uh, make it uncomfortable. She she exceeds, and almost immediately turns to start preparing, you know. Uh, Tinder and whatnot to get uh, a camp going so to help Elaine take care of the prisoners. With I kind, kind of, of part a stiff lip, you know. <laughs> I, I I just half jokingly said, "Or you're the only one we trust to keep Elaine in line anyway." Didn't I? <laughs> All right, gentlemen, let's head out. Oh, yeah. All right. And I, um, as we leave, I kind of, yeah, you turn to, uh, turn to Danae as your back's turn and then turn back away. Never, never really say anything. Except, except a sort of a muffled goodbye. Okay. Now. The way has been hard so far, but we're moving out into you know real mountain climbing. This, that's what is looming before you, right? Is this this spire, this split spire, and uh, your prisoner indicates that you'll need to cross between the spires to the spire that is beyond. And at its summit, inside his summit, is what he says. Right. 
is where you'll find what you're looking for, the winter encampment of Carl Ironarm. We're ready. I can just be, let us, let us press on. But I don't believe at this point there's a hurry. I want to be there. If we have to, if we have to best his champion and everything else, I think we need to be clear and slower and methodical about this. Let's press on between the. I made a couple of remarks to the to the fellows about just like how weak willed his followers must be to like be you know, to, to see something like that that a cloud in front of the sun, the sun really means you know, some sort of magic power. So the, the more time has elapsed between the sky going completely black and uh, and now, the more I'm going to just discount it as just just a cloud. Well, it'll be interesting too if he's been defiling the gods of some of his new followers. Um, that's a potential weakness as well. His priests too. Don't forget that. Yeah, you're not alone. Okay. As you move, you know, across the terrain, I would like you to. Uh, dig into your survival skills and also I don't know if we ever told Jose playing Ingvar about the tracking skill which for some reason didn't display properly on on the sheet uh, but no. the characters have, have tracking at uh, 48% Okay. All right. So I'd like to see how adept they are at reading the trail, right, in this environment that's not their normal environment. You know, they're they're high in the mountains. There's dusting of snow and uh, and other distractions and considerations. <laughs> so, are we doing this as a lead, or are we doing this individually? This will be separate. Okay. Yeah, you know, you're you're, move, you're you're each picking your own way across across the terrain, and this is, you know, if there are sentries, you know, even from miles away, they'd be able to pick out um, your right. progress across the the landscape. Twenty six. Twenty seven. Thirty eight. Oh, what? Uh, this is not the Jose I know. The 38 is nice good, man. I, yeah. 28 is good. 30, 30. Okay. Mine was one better than Freed's. I, I want that to be acknowledged. R remember, Ivan, this, is, this game is called The Price is Right. You want to <laughs> roll, except for a critical, you want to roll as high as possible. Yeah. Without going this over. is the Jose, you know. Yeah. Without going over. <laughs> we, 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 we know you had the page reference in your head, but I appreciate you not embarrassing us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. There is not a lot of game, but there is some. And you can see the tracks of a pretty skilled hunter. Uh, and very likely the the very archer that you captured. Right? You can see his footsteps. You can follow his trail back toward uh, the mountains. The biggest problem is that you simply are not prepared for the temperature. And although the terrain is rough, moving faster may be the only way to save your lives. Camping and, and starting a fire is just going to keep you chained to the fire. You've got to keep in motion. And, uh, I'm good. Yeah. So, survival. Here is where you'll get to work together. To watch each other for signs of, of frostbite and uh, and 
fatigue and all the other dangers that you face. So choose one lead and the others can add, can augment 20% of their skill. And this will I be nominate. Yeah, I nominate Ingma. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a second? <laughs> this, this will be a survival check. This is a straight survival check. Yes. But and the I difficulty can... is standard. It's not modified uh, downward. Uh, so that's 42 plus... Plus five from both Fritz and I, right? Yeah, rounding up. So 52%. Let's go. Come on. 28. There we go. That's what you should roll last time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> then we could have had a straight. That's right. <laughs> okay. So you find the right pace. I love and... this app. Also, this is a great app. <laughs> I love this app. This app's fantastic. It's very tactile. Yeah. You're able to find a route up that shelters you from much of the wind. And it's at the real base of the mountain, you know, where we say absolutely farewell to anything remotely resembling a foothill, where we say farewell to uh, trees as we think of them instead of, you know, gnarled, twisted uh, survivors growing up between cracks in the rock, you know. Uh, here we find some oddities, right? There is a warmth yeah. venting itself up in cracks in the earth where the snow has melted and reformed and turned to ice and reformed and, you know, and, and cracked. There is some warmth in the depth of the ground that sometimes oh. can escape. I'm stopping to warm my hands over that for a second. Is there, is it obvious? I'm trying to think how to put this. I want to get a sense of whether these new are new vents or if these been here for a while. Does that make sense? The. Let's see if what Brom can figure out. So take a look um, at his intelligence. Let's see here. We're smart people. Look at that. They're not bad. All right. So I'm uh, a 16 intelligence. So turn that into a percent. Six o'clock in the morning. Are you insane? I know. What the hell? A percent of eighteen. Uh, when you say a percentage, multiply by five. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's easy enough. Okay. Got it. Eighty. Okay. So let's roll it. I got the family brains. I got a 37. All right. That's not bad. All things considered. The, there was snow, which is melting quickly. So it seems unlikely that it could have accumulated with the heat. I, I note that to, to Fritz and, and Ingvar, and I'm like, dude, do we think the stories of this, I mean, is this guy for real? Like, is this, does he really have these powers? Do you... Oh, is this, I, I don't know what this is, but this, this is as natural as lightning. Who can explain okay. that? 
some work of the gods or work of some some iron arm in, in his stronghold. This is this is that's superstition. I don't know what this is, but it's normal. It's natural. I agree. And- Anthony, for uh, how superstitious, like, like, I'm trying to get a sense of us culturally, whether, how, how Brahm would sort this culturally. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, what I had envisioned when I made the pitch was a low to no fantasy environment. Okay. So it's not the kind of fantasy world where the gods literally walk, walk the earth where you see you know, wizards casting spells and, and priests doing right. miracles. But that doesn't mean the stories don't exist and there's no formal education and, you know, these kinds of arguments are as old as time. Right. So I think you've asked the perfect question and it's up to you lot to answer it. In the absence of evidence, you always have faith. Well, the the one thing I can tell you is that this is new, and whether he's he's doing it or not, or if there are the gods that are doing it, we should know that this is new. Something's changed. Lots of changes. Lots of changes. But to our benefit, right? It's warm. That's over. Oh, it's, it's warm. warm. That's true. It is warm. But we can't stay here forever. No. Let's, let's move on. And that's when you see it. Oh! A little mountain mouse. Fully awake and sitting, you know, cleaning its whiskers not too far from this crack and then it realizes makes eye contact with you making eye contact with it and it runs into the vent this gets the first smile out of freaks <laughs> in a long long time I guess it's not just for our benefit how big are these vents well, this one might be this big okay. and maybe two or three meters long. And is it so hot that we couldn't, or I couldn't stick my head over it and kind of get a set, like look deeper into it or would I burn my face off? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, it's not hot like that. It's, I mean, it's hot okay. because you're so cold but, Got it. Uh, and it, uh, it doesn't make you dizzy or or, or sick from other kinds of fumes or, or whatnot, like a, like a, uh, a sulfur pit or a, you know, a dung right. pit might. And, uh, well, I'm going to do just that then. I'm going to kind of stick my head and kind of see how far down I can see this thing. See, see where our, our little, our little friend went. All right. It's definitely warm. The closer you get, and there's the faintest orange glimmer. It's either a hallucination or, or real. Which it just turns everything into, into shadow. right? But it looks like it goes down a ways, and it may even open up. So he mentioned him being in the mountain. I'm wondering if this is... What if it was literal? What? This opens up. Yeah, it's got to be in there. It's got to be somewhere in there. It's, so I think we're without, without shelter, they would die. Yeah, I think we're looking for an entrance, friends. Let's do a it. cave. So you shall search. We shall. Okay. What? What's the plan? <laughs> <laughs> Fritz is just still just dumbfounded. You may have to roll influence. <laughs> what? You don't have to help. <laughs> is there? Is there any? So we can actually fit in this. Uh, a... No, I don't think we can fit in this one. I think we're going to look for one we can, though, right? 
So I'm yeah, I'm just trudging along after him, shaking my head at this point. Okay. But sort of liking the warmth if we're the closer out of the vents, so I'm very torn. But it's like let's we got to get going, and my God, I think I'm gonna die if I go back out there. So good. in terms of perception, what is the, I don't remember the number on the sheet. What how perceptive are very seventy three. All right. So just imagine someone so perceptive, right, that, you know, most of the time they notice what's happening around them, even though it's not obvious. And imagine these characters traveling together in a highly aroused state, right? So we're not going to drift into rolling as, to, you know, do they find the uh, an entrance? So there are several um, near misses, you know, vents and cracks that look very very fresh after the recent rumbling which you know a man can can move you know a full-sized adult can move into with some ease but not very far but it's obvious that these vents these fissures continue on it's just not enough space for you to get in and each one is warm and each one has the the glimmer of light and each one shows signs of life inside plant life, uh, small animals, you know, rodents and, and other insects, as if it were summer. Oh. So after more progress, you know, ever moving forward across the, the totally bare, snowed over and, and iced rocky plain, you find a fissure that has been intentionally hidden, but that the, 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 the almost cairn that has been assembled over it has been cast aside by the shaking of the mountain. You can see where the rocks have rolled, uh, leaving fresh tracks in the snow. And, uh, but you can also see the impressions where they lay around this entrance. And the entrance is carved, actually, as if you were climbing into <coughs> the open mouth of the grizzly. Ooh, awesome. The whole head is not is not done, but you know, in in the ground itself, um, you know, recessed back, we have the, the snout and the teeth, and uh, uh, it's it's wide enough for two to walk side by side, but it's not wide enough for two to fight side by side. You have no arm space, you know, and you'd be bumping shoulders against the wall and each other and occasionally having to duck your heads, but that's roughly how large it is. All right, Bram, you win. It, it sounds like this iron arm took everything from this bear people, everything. Much with us. Before we do anything, I, I'd like to—I want to know if we can see in here, and I don't want to do it through the door. Is there any chance that there's another vent close um, that could effectively work as a window for us here's to maybe where, give us another view? Here's where the dice can get involved. Absolutely. And uh, before you before you uh, roll, one detail I'd like to be clear on is right in the entrance, like you're standing in front of the entrance and you, you see it. The, the roof of it, let's say, the, the, the lintel under which you'd have to duck, has been marked with red pigment or red paint, right? In the same way that far down the mountain when you found the, the claw marks of the grizzly in the tree, Eric had said that the priests had painted over them. Right? And so the same sigil right, is here. <coughs> so perception for those who are looking for more insight. Yeah, I'll roll it. Seven, on my 73, let's see here. 76. 25. Okay. So after some 30, 40 minutes of 
of moving around the area. Um, a vent can be found that has daylight visible. Not torchlight, daylight. Not not torchlight or whatever this orange light is, but but daylight as if from the entrance, you know, and, and you can kind of patch the two together. Got it, got it, okay. I'm going to peek in. All right, well, inside, again, it's not a lot to see other other than stone and shadow and and animals but uh, no sign of guards or or human occupation per se certainly not torchlight it's a stable steady orange glow from down below I'll obviously wave over it's my friend my brother and my friend Going in there. So we go in. Do we want one of us to stay back, or do we all just go in? I'm trying. I, I don't know what makes more sense. Whether it, if we're walking into into danger, it would be helpful to have one of us out here. But at the same time, the three of us are stronger together. We are, and the one out here is going to freeze to death. Yes, he keeps moving. I'm Let's certainly go. not going to wait out here motionless, waiting for you to come back. I'm good. Let's go then. Let's go. You were right this time. Don't, don't gloat over it, bro. Okay, so moving back to the main entrance. Yep. Okay. Do we have an, uh, an order of movement? I'm imagining me waiting for Freets to go first and Freets just <laughs> extending his hand. <laughs> okay. I'll, go, I'll go first. I'll go first. He's down this thing, so try not okay. to show like just how much I'm enjoying the heat. But clearly, <laughs> clearly enjoying the heat as you know, as, as only a person's been outside and bitter, bitter cold can when they go inside a place that's about maybe 10 degrees Celsius. And it's like, oh my God, it's unbelievable. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, take all your clothes off. It's so sweltering. But yeah, that, that sort of yeah. thing. It's like, oh. the, the stone beneath your feet is the granite that you would expect. And it has been worn by the passage of, of time. It's been worn by, you know, water in the spring and uh, and the like there are no sconces carved for for torches or or any form of light the the walls are polished to a, a smoothness that you expect from from granite that's been worked but still quite natural in that it's not a straight hallway or a tunnel um, it doesn't have reinforcing beams it's just you know it is what it is this fissure through the rock and there are parts of it where because of the shaking of the mountain you could assume that that it has become difficult to navigate right things to climb over things to duck under there are disconcerting cracks and uh, and the like but it is warm and after proceeding 20 or 30 meters down it begins to level off and then suddenly opens up right and the heat spikes quite a bit the balmy 10 degrees or so of the entrance moves up into the 20s like a summer day oh right. high 20s and it's it's a dry heat and the, the orange light is far more vivid. And when I say opens up, it opens up in all directions. And this tunnel, for want of a better word, becomes a ledge or a lip around this vast pit, the bottom of which, far, far down, is liquid glowing stone in a lake of bubbling magma. 
Magma. Uh, by all the gods. In the magma is a black stone statue. How it got there is anyone's guess, but it's three times the size of a man. And it is a black, long-beaked bird. Like a raven. Wings spread, looking at the sky. And it's upright? It's not like... Okay. So its its feet are on the base. Its claws are gripping around the the black stone base on which it stands, and its body is is straining up toward the sky. Its wings are spread, right, and it's underlit by all of the magma. Yeah, I'm looking with that kind of wonder that you know somebody looks at like the the what probably what the former statue of the bear looked like. But how did they do that? But there's a point where you can no longer imagine anything. And then you just kind of accept the fact that it's there. And so. uh, And and you said that there's a trail going on on each side of the of the lake. Just just to one side, side. high, high above this. Like you're looking way down on it. And, you know, as your eyes adjust to the to the brighter light and the the type of light, uh, slowly the details begin to be picked out because there's cooler surfaces on the magma and it's darker and then it breaks and there's brilliant orange light which reveals more detail and around the base of this straining raven statue the motif is not avian or bird-like at all the motif is of the wolf But it's, is it clear? And maybe it's, we're too far to be able to tell. It, 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 the statue was carved with the base or is part of the base, or is there a possibility of this was put on the base? Does that make sense? They look to be the same stone. Okay. So th- did our, th- just, just a quick question, th- did our, our people worship these same animal spirits or is this something completely foreign to us? The mountain clans are known to be different. Okay. But that that people resonate with certain animals is a part and part of of many cultures, even if it's just, you know, someone, some child looking up at the sky and wondering what it'd be like to fly like like an eagle. There are these resonances and these are powerful images um, the wolf I think we're on the right track the wolf should be our totem silent revenge for a pack come on let us go okay now it's it's not narrower but there's only now one wall and there's no ceiling anywhere within grass we're in this huge vaulted orange lit chamber with this lip that's just wide enough for two people to to walk but those two people would really have to trust each other to walk side by side on the for, pathway for, for, particularly <laughs> particularly the guy on the outside right <laughs> so single file we continue right. so who is following freets uh, I'll be right behind him. All right. So Ingar is bringing up the rear. Right. Okay. And your weapons are quarter staffs. So do you want to be far apart enough for for them to be useful, or you know that you could, if somebody falls, you could. How much distance do you want between you? I guess is what I'm saying. You've got large weapons. Yeah, I, I would imagine I'm being, I would stay pretty close to Freets, um, not only for that reason, but if something were to jump in front of Freets, I want to be within striking distance quickly to be able maybe, to, to maybe assist. I would say it's six feet or so, you know, a yeah. man's height. It's something you can cover in a step, but you can exactly. still swing your quarterstaff to hand yep. it. Right. 
So he's too damn close, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> because Fritz is armed with, you know, a, a two-handed sword. It's very, you know, it basically has to be carried, you know, in hand. And the, the backswing is, you know, a good four feet if he's, you know. So, okay. Just yeah, six feet. Brom, better, Brom better jump. Fleet of foot. I'm not implying that you're going to be attacked or anything. I'm with all this talk. <laughs> of weapons. In, in, no way, to... in no way did we get that impression, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> we, I'm trying we to put things in concrete sure. human terms. About a sword length away, <laughs> in case you fall to your death in delay. <laughs> we're, we're, socially, we're socially distant. That's right. right. That's the best social distance guideline. That I cannot I, I, reach you with my two-handed sword. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm imagining, uh, in theory, if we rolled initiative... <laughs> Okay. It's only a theory. <laughs> so the curvature is something that you can now see, right, as you're moving around this cavern. And it's not exactly round, it's more of a more of an, an oval or, or oblong sort of shape. It's wider at this end than it is at at the other. And eventually come to another mouth of a tunnel. Right. This one's also carved with you know bare iconography and rather than descending into the mouth of the creature this time we see the outline of the body of the bear and where the doorway or the portal is is in the belly of the bear but the face has been defiled chiseled off shattered right there's just the the, the form left. I look, I don't say anything. I continue on, but I, I'm really, at this point, very, very wary of you know, keeping an eye out for archers or anybody else that could uh, put an end to us in a hurry. The, the I just, you know, I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, bro. No, that's it. I was just going to. Do the old I, I look of you know if you haven't quite caught this brown there's you know, look at look at that but yeah and, and I look up and the part that's taxing me is even though I don't follow the bear and the bear is meaningless to me just the, the idea of this defiling is is baffling to me um, like the why would you and what's the purpose here um, and, and, and if I that... and if I did follow the bear. I would just be enraged. So I've got like this one one step removed anger at what's happening. So even though I may not follow the bear, I'm not. I don't. I don't like that. This is this is what's been done. Right, and the fact that the the former followers now follow this guy exactly that makes it even more dangerous. Or could be an opportunity. You press on. Yeah, yeah, I think we pause for a moment, take it in, and then go. So moving away from this chamber, the temperature, you know, stays warm, but you're not in the direct uh, <laughs> rays of heat, you know. And uh, there is the hint of moving air, both hot air at your back, but sometimes eddies of cooler air from somewhere else. And as you proceed down this tunnel, it starts to get darker and darker, because your own shadows are kind of obscuring the orange light from, from behind. And as you're just moving into the point where it's completely dark, and you're moving by you know, reaching out to touch the walls on either side, you know, the stone is cold to your fingertips, you know, almost numbingly cold, and a little bit damp from condensation, is when you start to hear the low murmur of chanting from further down the tunnel. Slightly distorted by echo, but not, not much. When I do the appeal, well, you can't see it. The whole fist, you know, the whole fast. <laughs> back and motion for the others to be to be quiet. So at this point, 
try to be as stealthy as possible. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I go. I go from using the uh, quarter staff as kind of a walking stick to it is now being held as a weapon. Yeah. Okay. Stealth, I believe, is called for. Yikes! <laughs> Not your long suit. <laughs> I said I was going to try to be stealthy. I didn't say I was actually going to be stealthy. It's tempting. <laughs> Four six isn't terrible. How do we okay. do a group? Do we do a group stealth, uh, Anthony, or is this be individual? We can. Uh, you all have the same score uh, in yeah. this regard. You're all working together. So one of the options given to us by the game is is a team role where the lowest among you would make the role, and if they're successful, then everybody else is. I kind of like that sorting role. So uh, let's pick someone and have them roll, and they determine the fate of all. I vote for Brown since he's leading. Well, no. Fritz, Brown, Fritz was leading. I'll go. Oh, I'll, Fritz I'll, is I'll leading. Go. Then it's Fritz. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, it's Fritz. I'll, 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 I'll. You got it's this. Fritz. I'd like to point out, this is much better than a two and six chance. You know, we thought that was cool back in the day. <laughs> that was when you really had a, had a good chance of doing something. New. And this is 13. That is oh, what yes. I'm talking about. That's right. Thank, Ninja thank Fritz. You, we don't need a laugh. This is Hal Zucati dice. All right, go get you some. All right. <laughs> All right. But you, you keep showing me the dice in reverse order, so I automatically read 310. <laughs> yeah, it's like, 310. It was three times. It was, uh, you know, listen. <laughs> Thanks, Hal Zucati. Thanks. Uh, All right, so quietly, even though this is, you know, the, the very definition of a place that would create echoes right it is an echo chamber you move steadily and quietly toward the sound of the chanting which slowly resolves into distinct voices you can hear that there are multiple voices chanting and that it's like a a corral right one person starts and at a certain uh, point in their chanting, the next person starts repeating the exact same thing, and then the next person, the next person, in this endless cycle of individual yet group voices. But the language that they are chanting in is not one that you know or can figure out due to the, the echoes, right? Can't even recognize, oh, that's the language of the hill people or, or whatever. But I would like you to make a willpower check. Ooh. Oh, Rama, rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> willpower check. Nice. That's pow, right? No, no willpower. It's, willpower. At, willpower. it's at the bottom. Yeah, it's double, double your power. It's at the bottom of the... <clears throat> Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Whew, that makes me feel better. Okay. Got a 10. You are on fire. I did not. 93. Okay. Zero 08. Nice. Or is it 800? <laughs> no, now it's zero 08. Double 08. All right, so the man in the front and the man in the back and the man in the middle are slightly different in that the man in the middle is afraid. Now, this isn't applying any penalties to Brahm, any stretch of the imagination. But there's something about this chant which is wrong. <clears throat> yeah, which ties to the feelings I've been having this whole time with all this defilement and everything. Right. So what's on the other side? What are you going to find? This is starting to, you know, work. In the, in the back of his mind. 
And before too much farther, you begin to see at the end of the hallway a glimmer of what seems to be normal torchlight. Or lantern light or something like that. Familiar light. And the chanting is getting louder and clearer. And you're also starting to hear the sound of shuffling feet. Right? As though there's some sort of movement or ritualized movement along with this chant. But worse and confirming the fear in Brahm is the smell of roast pork. Tastes like chicken. The long kind, yeah. <laughs> uh, cannot be. As Ingmar lets that slip from his lips, I just kind of give him the angry look and get the, you know to take take a look at Brian's face really for a second. You know, maybe that little little glimmer of something belying the fact that he started to you know, go boogie boogie. Yeah, like in that look. I kind of signal it free to my quiet. staff. Go on. Really, really quiet. Really, really quiet. Yeah. We're hunting rabbit. <laughs> the passage begins to widen. The light begins to increase. And you're able to discern that you're going to be coming out kind of high up in a large chamber. So not entering in at floor level, but entering in higher up and maybe it just the floor just of your tunnel just stops and you'd have to jump down or maybe it works its way down you can't see that but you know you're up in the top of of wherever the whatever space you're you're about to enter and you see shadows dancing across the wall lit by some kind of central fire and uh there's there's smoke now that you can you can smell and that breathing sound burned into your memories from the keep where you rescued your kin you hear it that silenced screaming is echoing through this chamber what's this alright still so well I understand that you'd like to exert some control but now let's talk about your hatred it's true okay. all right it's going past you. let's let's see how the voice of that? emotion speaks to your voice of reason and what is the result of that and what is our hatred because when i convert us to so under passions oh i know 56. i know but like i've oh. It is if you say, okay. Yeah, just 58. Can't it says it on display. Cuts it off. 58? Yeah. Okay, so if you roll if you roll passion or lower, then you succeed, right? Which means the passion overtakes you, right? I rolled or, a 58. You know, it, it informs you <laughs> in your role play of the character, yes. So consumed 58. by hate. 58. I'm consumed by hate. The price yes. is right. You know, the, 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 get those flashbacks of my own people. I don't know, these, these, these other prisoners must be in the same condition. 53. And, oh, these and, people do is, and when I wanted to roll high, 37. <clears throat> what these people have done is, is rape and defile and, and, and destroy everything. We are okay. bear sark indeed. Us, there's other people from the bear. So I think I think we can imagine it's something like this, right? As they're as you're creeping down toward the end of the tunnels, you're, as you're discerning more and more details, right? The shadows in the wall uh, become connected with the shuffling sounds, and you get a sense of this kind of circular motion, and you smell the smoke, and realize probably what's cooking, right? And you hear the this breathy, silent scream, and remembering exactly what that sounded like and why it sounded that way, and then. The anger, of course, starts to build. The hatred, the reason why you're here, the, the vengeance. And then that first sight, right, as the tunnel widens up and all three of you can look down into the chamber and see what's happening, right? 
is. I leave so it up to you. So this is paradise. <laughs> there is a circle of men wearing robes. On one side, it's the pelt of a wolf with half of a wolf skull. On the other side, it's the feathers, the stylized feathers of the raven with half of a beaked skull on that side, leaving only the bottom of the face clear. They're otherwise nude, right? So their shoulders and, and back, and the, these cloaks hang to the floor. And they're dancing around in a circle. They're smeared with red paint or blood. In the center is not a bonfire or a ring of torches. It is a barbecue pit of coals, and they are roasting people alive. And they How are many of them did you say? Sort of. How many of them did you say we see? There are five, and they're equally spaced, moving around the brazier, the big body-sized brazier. And in the far wall in the shadows are others waiting, right, chained to the wall, witnessing this event. All right, ready for the charge, Ivan. Oh yeah, man. How how like how high up are we compared to them? It's, if I missed that point. If they, uh, you're about chest high. Your feet are about chest height off the floor. Okay, so not terribly, terribly. Yeah. So in other words, I I can leap off this and and cleave a man in twain if I if I so desire, or at least attempt to. The ceiling is good 30, 40 feet up. There are no obstructions in the room other than the brazier, right? The other prisoners, it's hard to see how many of them there are. They're all kind of bunched together, and they're mostly in shadow. They're chained directly to the wall. Uh, the brazier itself is, is metal and, uh, you know, and curved, and it, it's meant to have a body laying on it, held in, in place uh, for maximum torture. Right? And, a half uh, for, moment before... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Anthony, the I'm the sorry. floor is flat. It's not Got uneven it. or rocky or natural. It's it's a prepared stone floor, and the <laughs> circumference of the not the circumference, but the diameter of the room is a good fifty feet. Beautiful room to work. Um, I instantly know what Fritz is going to do, and the only thing I'm concentrating on right now is whether Fritz goes left or right because I'm going the other way. But there's no. I already know. Where free, where free says that is because it's in the same place as mine. So that's all I'm doing is waiting for Freets to move. Initiative, gentlemen. All right, let's do it. And I apologize. What do we roll for initiative? <clears throat> you just roll a d10 and you add your initiative rating to it, which was a 15 because of your armor. Eighteen for initiative. I rolled a one. <laughs> so obviously I'm waiting. To see what it does. I rolled a whopping five, so it's twenty. But so I'm sixteen. Twenty and then what'd you get for Fritz? Eighteen. Well we're waiting on Fritz, so Okay, well, so what, what was, I didn't, I didn't hear Fritz's. Oh, 18. 18. 18, eight, 18 right, so 20, 20, and then I have 16. 18, 16. I also have a 16. What is Brahm's dexterity? My dexterity. It's 15. It's 15. All right, so um, all three of you and then them. So for this first round, that will count as surprise. Beautiful. Okay. Right. And you you said from that from where we're standing, we could just we don't have to go single fire. We could just leap down and, and reach them. Yeah, it it opens up and you can just leap leap down, and you will be able uh, to close with them. Would this count as a charge attack, or yeah, just a could, leap? For for a charge, to really like the charge maneuver, you need to yeah. charge for the whole the whole time, um, and then attack after but um yeah we could just reach him and attack okay yeah so we'll do that so now 
there's one thing in your combat style that we haven't seen yet, and that's the combat style's special trait. There are all kinds of different special traits, depending on how people are taught. And you Highlanders yes. are taught to fight with an intimidating scream. I saw that. That's which is awesome. a form of psychological warfare, which makes things like morale checks and, and whatnot harder for them to resist. So attacking from surprise with an intimidating scream would be exactly what that thing was was meant for. Well, but you don't I'm have shouting. to. You know, if you want to be silent, that's... No, 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 no. We're, we're screaming. We're going to give we're gonna give the angel of death scream, you know? We're, we're going to give <laughs> shout, shout the you battle cry. You know exactly cry. what I'm talking about, yeah. Uh, we're shouting our battle cry and, you know. All right. So All right. first up is Ingvar. So leap down, shouting the battle cry, and try to whack him with my shepherd's crook. So that's uh, uh, that's one d eight, right? Damage. Yep. And do do we have to roll for the scream first? No, it's okay. something that you can just do. Got it. All right. Oh, nice. I rolled a zero zero one for one point of damage at location eleven, which would be the chest. Well, that is a critical, and it's from surprise, meaning I'm not going to spend an action point to defend against it. All right. So, so you will, so, you will get two special effects. So I could max damage and put it on the head, right, if I wanted? Or some other equally interesting location. Uh, let me take a look. No, but I'll do that. I'll max damage and put it on his head. Nice. This is not going to work. And your maximum damage would be? Eight, I believe. Okay. So that eight will be reduced by the armor on his head. However, that will still uh, reduce that location to zero. And... I will need to see if he can remain. Uh, he can't. All right. So he goes down in a heap with his yeah. his raven wolf helm shattering around his head. Right. Reveals an older man, you know, a graying beard. Right. And gray shot hair, and he just goes down with with. Head wounds bleed a lot with blood gushing uh, from the from the side of his head, and uh, he slams into the the brazier, you know, which makes this gonging sound, and uh, and he's he's out of the fight. Nice, very barbaric beginning. I love it. Yep, that's awesome. Freets, Freets, alrighty. There we go. Alrighty, goody. That is a 31. A yes. 15 location for four points. And wait a minute, does that? That's, that's a right of, arm. Yeah, okay, that's a right arm. That's a, that sword is, is just straight D8, right? Or is it does there as a. Okay. All right, then. Four points to the right arm. Okay. That's, that's what I got. So, although we're processing the characters in order, you know, 20, yeah. 18, 16. This is happening within eye blinks of right. each other because each each turn is no time at all, right? Right. All right, so pretty nasty cut to the arm. There isn't much in the way of armor protection there, so all of these, like, it, it it bites into the arm completely, and there's there's blood. This is a survivable wound. It might not even scar after, you know, after he heals up. But uh, you know, the the force of the blow sends him sends him reeling into into the wall. You know, he's looking around, just 
just now registering what is happening as the blood starts to spray across the brazier from his fallen comrade. And out of the corner of his eye, he sees Brom coming, who... Um, so I don't know how mechanically this would work, but my, my concept is uh, run running leap and essentially turning my quarterstaff into a baseball bat. And my goal is, is not only to hit him, but hit him with the idea of into the fire, into the coals. Um, and I apologize for not remembering this. I'm going to, I'm going to roll my percentile. I'm also going to roll my D eight for damage at the same time, as well as my D 20. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. And I'm, I'm rolling against Braun. Or with Ron? You're rolling your combat style. 73%. 73. 73? Okay. Yeah, we're good. Now, I, uh, Fritz, uh, have you had time to choose your special effect? Oh, I do. I, I did special effect this fellow, didn't I? Okay. I did not realize I had that happen. Um... How did I trigger it? that? No, no. You hit him in because the... he did not defend. He did not defend. Oh, so... that's correct. That's correct. Okay, that's that's why. Okay. Um. Then yeah, look at me. Give me a second there. Okay. Go ahead. Go. Um, go ahead, Brown. I, I'm enraged. Absolutely enraged. Um, out of sorts. I rolled a 99. Um, so this is a yeah, fumble. I'm just, yeah, I'm I'm overtaken by the entire situation. Would you? Uh, luck points refresh. Ah, that's right. Yes, I would. And it remind me of my luck. I can re-roll this. You can re-roll. You can reverse, or you can cause someone else to re-roll, who is attacking you. Yeah, so I'm. Go I'm going to re-roll things. Re yeah. Reversing does me no good. <laughs> None at all. <laughs> um, but I keep my d20 and my d8 where it is. Is that accurate? Yep. Okay, yep. so it's just the percentile. Uh, wow. Still still overwhelmed with an 80. Okay. So by now, they're beginning to trigger, right? So Ingvar cuts one down. Fritz sends his, you know, spinning away from his sword cut. And you collide with yours, uh, who, is, who is pushed back uh, into one of his cohorts. And you know, spared from falling back into the to the flames. And now it's their opportunity. Okay. Now they're not uh, armed; they're not even dressed. Right? Fritz, what was your special effect? I, I, I think an oppressor the advantage, if I recall, that gives me. Right, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah, okay. so he'll be only able to defend. All right. All right. So that has you, you know, up against him. You've got you still got the blade. Uh, in where where you've cut them and you're kind of shoving them backwards, keeping them off off balance. He can, right. you know, kind of jostle for position to to protect himself, but otherwise he's he's out of luck. However, one of of these priests, one of the on the far side, right, is able to to come to his senses and and make an attack of sorts, and he throws himself very nimbly over the brazier and the, the writhing, smoking body that's there, right, in an attempt to tackle Brom, right? But Brom isn't where Brom should have been had he been successful. He's, you know, been, been pushed aside, and this man slams into his own cohorts. Wait, did, did, did this mean that Brom just disappointed the bad guys? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just you let them down. Yeah. Part of the plan. <laughs> and he's the only one that can act in a combative form at uh, in this in this surprise round. And we move again to the top of the order with Ingvar. And it's been it... you know split seconds since. Do I have an, anyone within striking distance? You've got the man at your feet. Brom next to you. Fritz has pushed off across the room toward the wall. All right. right. And there is a cluster of three of these individuals right in front of Brom. Between Brom and the brazier. I'll go help Brom. 
Let's go. Strike. All right. This is a 59 for four points to location eight, which would be the abdomen. Yeah. Ooh. Low blow. I'm going to spend an action point and try to defend, and I fail. All right. So let's go for... Um, uh, so he I turns around at the last minute, you know, to try and and close with you to to not be hit by the staff and just walks right into the blow. Yeah, so I just slam him the stomach. Would would a stun location be effective at the abdomen? Yes, it is. There, it has it has different effects in each location. Yeah. So let's do that. Constipated for a week. <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps there's something else. That's Who are these barbarians? <laughs> That's a spicy meatball. Oh, what, have, what have they done? <laughs> we surrender. <laughs> it's, it's inhumane. It's evil. It's evil. All right. So stun, stun location, location for the abdomen. A post roll of endurance versus original attack roll. Yeah. yeah. There we go. And the original attack roll was fifty nine. Right. That's awesome. So he he couldn't attack if he doesn't beat me. Yeah. So he has. Um, totally been winded, right? Hitting the diaphragm, and you know, and he just kind of folds down on the ground. Um, around the end of the of the staff, you know, completely out of the fight. That's nice. how that's how badly I did not pass the endurance. Oh, <laughs> endurance I roll. see that. I see. <laughs> you know, and, and his helm, his helmet, uh, his headdress really is is what it is. Uh, slides off, and it's another, uh, like, you know, middle aged gentleman with you know sagging. Flesh and beady eyes, and you know, tears are coming. Well, yeah. He's gasping this, for air. This game is awesome, but it's two Mike Myers. Lothar of the Hill people meets middle aged man. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's awful. All right. Freaks. All right, Freaks. All right. Uh, I want to destroy this man. So that is a, a 20, location 18, five points. So that is. The left arm. Uh, you not are, content, you, not content with the right arm. Disarming. This guy does not want. To, I don't want this guy to ever clap again. So yes. Well, he's 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 protecting himself from your sword with his arms. Right? Exactly. That's exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's five points to the left arm. He is of course trying to protect himself and fails with an eighty-three. All right. Uh, is there is there an effect on this, this action then? Yes, so you get a special effect oh, oh. anytime your level of effect one is second. different. Yeah. Gotcha. So you, okay. you succeeded and he failed, so that's one special effect. If you critically right. succeeded and he failed, that would be two. If you critically succeed and they critically fail, that's three special effects. And every right. time okay. it's a critical on your end, you get access to ones that you normally don't have access to. Right. So I believe Sunder is not on the list of things I can do right now. It's also for objects. Right. Right. That's it. But he doesn't really have any objects that I want to Sunder. Sunder is rope. He doesn't have a rope. You know, that's just <laughs> But there is a wonderful one called Impale. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I guess, yeah, why not? Or... Yeah, bleeding takes too long, but impale. Yeah, I'll impale his arm. Yeah, right in there. How about that? Okay. Or just, you know, just to offer some. Everything's frozen. Um. There is flurry. Oh, there is. Okay, I didn't see that one on the, on the sheet sheet thing here, but flurry. 
And this allows. That shows um, is unarmed only. Flurry is unarmed only. I'm looking okay. for. What would Remise do? Remise, yes. Remise. It's small weapon only, and he's using a large weapon. So the two options I had in mind are are offside. You can't do them. But uh, keep in mind, if you're in a dagger fight, you'd be able to attack again. Ah. I love to disarm opponent, but, you know, I think, and you know, that's, that falls under Sunder. Yes. Yeah. So, All right. So yes. you want to do Impale? Is that it? Okay. I Sorry guess, to yeah. distract yeah. you from your... That's okay. That's okay. Okay. Now, we're not... Uh, I'm assuming you want to just do this for damage sake rather than uh, leaving it in, right? Yeah, I don't want to leave it in. Okay. And a freak action is going right between the radius and the ulna. <laughs> right, right, through, right through there. It's sticking right in his forearm. So please don't don't try to don't try to move your hand because that's going to hurt a lot. <laughs> bad. Yeah. Oh, that's right there. Okay. So if uh, you could give me a, a subsequent damage roll. A subsequent damage roll. Is that a strict? Just strictly another D eight, or is that a different? Yep. Die. For, okay. That's a one. Sorry, man. It's four on right. So while the weapon is in his arm, all of the, everything he tries to do um, is going to be formidable. Right. So like, you can literally control him, kind of stuff. Uh, but this will, of course, leave you without the use of that weapon. Right. So he can try and pull it out, inflicting damage to himself. You can pull it out, inflicting damage to him, but that will take place later. All right. All right. Brom! Let's see if I've gotten my wits about me yet. Right in front of you is the man who is winded, wind knocked out of him by Ingvar, and behind him are two other uh, of the priests, one of whom is the one who leapt across the brazier, so is obviously not some old man. Yeah. Yep. Um, I did get my wits about me and kind of shook the head a little bit um, especially seeing the success uh, that my uh, compadres are having. So I got a 16 um, hitting the uh, left leg with a 7. Alright. He will try to leap out of the way. 85 does not do it. I'm rolling a lot of 80s and 90s today. Big fan. Big fan of 80s and 90s from the gym. <laughs> yep. Um <laughs> Uh, bash versus what will bash give me bash is here it's trying to get them off balance which is what you're talking about before yep and it's typically done with a shield for example okay and it knocks them back one meter for every two points of damage from a shield but you're using your quarter staff which is one meter for every three points all right so it'll be it'll be two meters then um, all right and we know what's like right behind him don't we yep so he gets to make an agility check and we know that he's quite agile as he just leapt across it in the first place to uh deal with this particular flaming problem that you've introduced into his life. And I get a 54, which is enough, I'm sorry to say. So he goes backwards over the roasting body, right? Setting up sparks and scream and causing the blood to break, or the, the skin to break and blood to boil. And he rolls over, somersaulting onto his feet on the other side, right? livid, but now you have this obstacle in between you. And he has taken how much damage? A seven. seven. Oh, this may be it for him anyway. In the what location? Oh, this would be uh, left leg. Left leg. Nice. So they all like flipped, flipped him up and over, right? And... Alright. Sorry for him. His elegant 
landing on the other side with his eyes full of rage is just for the barest of seconds as his leg gives out underneath him and he collapses on the other side. As he realizes his left leg was broken when he landed on it. <laughs> he didn't know until then. <laughs> and from here on in, he's known as Eileen. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh boy. Everyone take 12 points of damage. <laughs> his name is Jack. Right. Jack being involved. And I'm going to... Because of the intimidating scream, because of the attack from nowhere, because of bodies dropping like flies, because of horrifying impalement, I'm going to be making a willpower check for them to see if they break and run. They've got a pretty good chance to succeed because they're horrifying, torturing, mutilating priest types, but, you know, there's a little bit of cowardice in there, too. All right. They stay. And the... One right in front of Brom, still in front of Brom, reaches for the fire poker, the iron mm. fire poker, and and brandishes it up in front of him, and uh, he's in a defensive crouch with it. Um, one I... guy's down with a broken leg, one guy can't breathe, one guy's essentially dead, and the other one's impaled. All right. Back at the top of the ramp. It's dark out and we're wearing sunglasses. <laughs> so this is Ingvar. I love that poker guy. <laughs> poker guy. Oh, That's... come on. You don't want Brom to have an interesting scar? <laughs> <laughs> He'll have plenty of chances, I'm sure. So that's a 31 for, again, four points. So I guess my, my die rolls one or four and the eight. Uh, at location at the right arm. We hate arms. <laughs> the, the the game is the, the the to hit table is made so that's your arms and legs are big targets, right? Because big sense they're big targets. Yeah, he critically succeeds. Okay. Yay. Now, this means that he gets to do a defensive special effect back in your direction, but he's not an unarmed <laughs> fighter, and you're using a medium-sized weapon, right? right? So his arms count as a small-sized weapon. So he'll be taking some of the damage that you inflicted anyway. Well, doesn't he have the poker, Anthony? Yeah, he has the poker. He has the poker. He does, but I'm not defending with it. Ah, got uh, it, got it, got it. So he couldn't inflict the extra damage on Ingvar, so he had to hit Brom instead. <laughs> With friends like these. Listen, that's what happened. To, that's what happened to Aloy. You know, to Aloy you know. And he's not here now. More or less. You know. <laughs> Anyhow, conti please continue. Never helped a game master. Okay. Uh, and even if uh, even if he were using the poker, if he were that if he were that together, it would count as a small weapon anyway. Right. So. All right. He. Yes. Has gripped you, requiring a resisted brawn check. A what? Excuse me? Brawn. I need you to roll your brawn, brawn to to prevent being gripped by him as he has uh, stepped in. You are strong, oh, Ingvar. So strong, brawn, like, like strong, like strong, like like bear. Brawn is one of your skills. <laughs> yes, fifty-five percent, and I rolled a zero eight. Yeah. Okay. Silly cultists were Highlanders. <laughs> and I roll a zero this... two. Oh, two crits in a row, but your zero eight, if it only were a crit for you, which it's not, would have it's been not, better. Yeah. So, yes. so he has you. He's got the poker in one hand, he has you in the other, and he's taken 
damage from from the the quarter staff. And on his uh, turn, which is coming up soon after Brom, he will be attacking with the with the flaming poker, and you'll have advantage uh, in that regard because he's got you in his grasp. Okay. But next is Fritz. I still have the spell impaled. So. Yep. Um, I guess I take the weapon out. I'd love to help being Roar, but I really can't without the with the weapon stuck in this guy. And besides, I really do have to, you know, disable him entirely. You've got a stick. Okay. We've got a fire. Let's make him a marshmallow. <laughs> I'm gonna wing, wing him or try to wing him around into the fire <laughs> with a, with the with a sword in his arm. Is that possible? I mean, is there a mechanical way to handle that? What's a yeah, your uh, your Resist your your brawn versus his brawn. Yeah. Hmm. It's got to be and, awful hard for. You know. And you would have an advantage because he's penalized in his skill use because he's impaled by this large object through his his arm, right? Representing your leverage, so it all works. Okay, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. That's, on second thought, I'm not one to, to one for for writers room so much, but that's actually a really good idea. So we're just gonna <laughs> go with the brawn. That's that's a that's a good one. That's a, that's, you know, right, right. Um, so I roll thirty one. Cool, that's a success. I fumbled all by myself without even doing any math. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy to shepherd him into <laughs> into the flames. Awesome. Because I'm just absolutely livid that these people are roasting, you know, roasting other people alive. It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, I hate these men. Now it's around this point that the person on the brazier loses consciousness. Thank goodness. And you know succumbs to to the horror of that experience. Right. And this brings us to right that now there's two bodies on the brazier, and this brings us to Brahm. So uh, we've got we've got my buddy holding on to Ingvar, um, and Getting I'm ready to attack. Right, I, I want I want to inject myself in that situation, and I'm not quite sure what makes the most sense. Whether it's hitting him with the staff, tackling him, or uh, I'm I'm not quite sure. Um, shoots him, shoots him both. Follow yeah. your heart. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think, I think, I mean, I'm imagining with my quarter staff, them being so close to each other that I am not necessarily dropping my staff, but I just think I physically am going to tackle and grapple this guy um, as just a reaction to him, obviously physically controlling Ingvar. You will have a benefit of attacking from behind. Great. If you, if you wanted to. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, it may not be... <laughs> ideal but i think that 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 would be my reaction um so that would be using my would that be a brawn as well that's an unarmed attack oh it is all right 43 yep. all right and do i still do the d20 uh yes okay so for 43 with an 11 uh so nice. 40 43 with a chest. Right. So that makes sense, right? Yep. But the dice listen. They know. They do. They know me. And, uh... Um, Air hug. How, how, uh... I never did tell you what your, what your, uh... bonus would be, but you made it anyway. Great. So, um... So now it becomes brawn. Got it. But he... Before we get there... You have attacked. He's not defended. It was mostly from surprise. So you were successful, and you have a special effect. So choose one that matches your intention. I think uh, grip would make the most sense. Okay. And your, your goal is to prevent him from being able to attack. Correct. So we'll do our resisted brun check, not to see if he can break free, but just to see who has control. 
Right, yeah. so I wish him luck with my 14. Whoa. And I get, wow, 94. <laughs> um, definitely changing these dice. I'm changing them right now. That one's going away and <laughs> this one's coming. Oh, no, that's okay. There you go. Okay. Um, so you have you have control. So uh, it's it's now his turn anyway. You know, so you know his arm comes down, but he's he's you know at the, the full extent of his of his grip. You know, and, and, uh, so there is uh, very little chance that he can inflict injury on on the armored Ingvar. Right. Which brings us back to Ingvar. All right. So. Um... When when we're this close, I assume that either I cannot attack with my weapon or there's a penalty. There there is a penalty, yeah. Alright, so I'll just headbutt him. There we go. Okay. I just I've got his arm, I've got him behind on the chest. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the damage just in case I actually manage this? Uh it's just you know, a D3. D3, all right. Okay, so, so I'm doing an unarmed attack because I don't know if it's going to be a head, but I rolled uh, uh no, I missed. I rolled a 51 for an unarmed <sighs> attack. So let's say it is a head button and it just slams into the, you know, the, the beak yeah. uh, oh. structure of his, of his helm. And, uh, okay. Freets. All right. Um, this fellow's in the brazier. Um, my sword's still on his arm. Yeah. I recall correctly. Well, I gotta take it out at this point. This is pointless. Okay. And fresh so blood him. flows. Alrighty. Um, and do I roll anything for that? Do I roll for extra damage? You've already given me the damage oh, yeah, for it. Yeah, okay, I got it. All right. Um, what's his condition other than just being in the brazier? He's, he's about still... to catch uh, his clothing, or his, his cloak is about to catch fire. Uh, right. But otherwise, he's just in pain from this experience. Right, okay. Well, I want to end him because the last thing I want is for anybody to run off and warn anybody else. And as much as I'd like to see him burn to death, you know. So yes, I will, I will attempt to finish him. Stality. Finish him. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And that is a that is a 65, a location one for one point of damage. So apparently, apparently yanking the weapon out is not so easy. And then I, of course, I get his right leg. Obviously, because, you know, his body's back yeah, over the... Yeah, yeah. the so I pulled it out and it's kind of started impotently whack his right leg. Yeah, these dice are much better. All right. Um... He rolls off the back of the brazier. He's got the brazier in between you and him. Okay. And uh, reducing the one point of damage down to nothing. Okay. All right. And it's time for me once again to check their condition. <laughs> my, remember when I said my new dice were so awesome? Well, the ones who are able break and run. So... The guy who just rolled off the brazier runs for it. The guy with the stunned leg, right? He's crawling his way out of the room. The guy who's busy bleeding to death continues to quietly bleed to death. The guy who's gripping Ingvar lets go of the grip, drops the, the fire poker, and he's still in in uh, Brahms' grasp, and he's just struggling to, to get away. And you feel his heart starting to pound um, as they, they kind of recognize the, the situation that they're in. I, I don't want them to get away and alert everybody else to our presence. The last thing I want is 57 guys coming here to like, cook us alive. So I'd, I'd prefer to chase the most fleet of foot, which seems to be the fellow that I was messing with, and, and try to dispatch him. If he gets away, yep. and, and I yell, "I've got him!" to to Ingvar. So okay. Ingvar and Fritz will give chase. 
Okay. You want to take the slow one that's kind of crawling away? <laughs> You were muted. muted. Rom's turn, right? Yeah. But I will, I will assist uh, in the chasing down. I think, we've got, I think we've got two guys. We've got the crawler and we've got the runner. Yeah. And, and Brom has the one he's holding. Right. Yeah, I'm just going to maintain my control of him. Okay, so we'll move on to Ingvar. All right, so... I'll, uh, I guess I'll go, I'll go and whack the guy who's following, uh, following Fritz's, uh, directions. I'll go whack the guy whose leg is broken. Okay. So he has, uh, high penalties to defend himself, but let's give it a try. Nope. All right. I roll a 26. That's pretty good. 26, area 9, so that's the abdomen for three okay. hits. And a stun location there will take him out. Let's do that. Okay. I imagine that if he was crawling away, I actually hit him at the lower back, right? So, bam. Right in the, right in the kidneys oh. and the liver, right? That's a yeah, debilitating right. blow. Right. Fritz. All right. Am I able to give? I'm, I'm in a position where there's enough room to give him the sword stroke, or, or has he already gotten to a passageway or something? Where that's going to be He's in a passage, so you're reduced to thrusting. Okay. Thrusting is good. Observe. Uh, I, <laughs> thrusting is good. I'll attempt to do that in that case. Okay, good. That's 11, location 19 for seven points of damage. So location. Location you 19 is finally the head. head. Yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> chop for off seven his head, man. Yeah. Yeah. We don't chop it off. We thrust it in the back of his head. Oh, it's phenomenal. How about his mouth? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, well, that's the camera shot, right? We see the camera go in close, and you see him going, uh. <laughs> yeah, this is, no, no, just, to, just for Craig's benefit, this is a Zack Snyder 300 thing, slow-mo. <laughs> <laughs> Please, with theme music. Whatever this guy's theme music was. <laughs> hard rock. It's a hard That's rock right. thing. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I, I once hard again rock take missed, on an 80s tune. Once again, <laughs> missed the, the defense by one point. That's two in a row. And uh, yes, this guy is, is down and finished. And, and this, it was an impale, just even if Ivan didn't want it to be. It was just... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I, drag, I drag the body back. Um, and I do, in fact, throw it on the brazier. And I'm just making sure the person on the brazier is dead. Yeah. And if they're not dead, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just, you know, cut their throat or whatever. Their, so, you know, put them out of their misery. Right. Yeah, well, they're all dead now. All right. All right. So you finish off the rest? Yeah. I'm going to keep the live one. The one I've got control of. I... All right. We'll help you tie him with strips of his own cloak. Tie him? Yeah, hoblum. Hamstring. Permanently. Parmer he doesn't need Achilles tendons. <laughs> so I, I see the look in Fritz's eye, and I'm like, just don't kill him. <laughs> oh, he'll live. He'll live. Yeah. All right. All right. So the room is still filled with the silenced screams of the captives as you go about your bloody work of finishing off the wounded and crippling the captive. Mercifully, I'm tired. I'll go check on the captives uh, at well. Uh... And, and I assume, Anthony, that these captives are not dressed such that they would survive outside, right? Right. They're yeah. being prepared as... Yeah. Uh, as meals and not treated with any kind of human consideration yep. whatsoever. Yikes. Okay. So is this a uh, pause time or? A... This is this is the point where we'll have to, to bring it to a close. It's two minutes to and... midnight. One minute to midnight. <laughs> yeah. And so around the silver as... time, we'll have to uh, interrogate the prisoner. Right. The, uh, the prisoner 
seeing the fate before him, you know, the conversation, but let's just hobble him, right? Don't, no, don't, don't, just don't kill him. Oh, I'm not going to kill him. You know, this, this conversation, his, his will is already broken, right? Uh, he, uh, so I'll tell you anything you need to know. We've got, we've got the warlord in the palm of our hands. Mm. We fade to black. Very nice. nice. It's about like toxic. It. I'll tell you everything. So I know you will. <laughs> you already <laughs> have. That's a, uh, I know. I know you will. That's awful. I feel. Like, uh, All right. It was fun. Yeah, awesome. I really enjoy the the dynamic feel. I said it the last time we played, Anthony. It's it's very interesting to me to have something this crunchy feel so dynamic. Usually, you don't get both. I think the, the biggest trick is, other than the DM knowing what he's doing, right, is rolling all the dice at the same time. I agree. You have to roll it all at the same time, otherwise it, it bogs down. Is, and is that prescriptive, or is that something that you added to it, Anthony? It's, it's long practice of RuneQuest and Mithras yeah. players. It doesn't really yeah, we all, we wind always up in the did text, it back, but that's, that's back very cool. Yeah. Um, the only time I find it gets in the way is if the dice are sitting there long enough for a reason that you begin to imagine that you know you've you've attacked their right arm and then the way things roll out you realize that you're going to move the location somewhere and you have to reimagine uh, right. that can be disruptive for for some players but uh, um, or if there's been a mistake you know and like uh, like tonight I skipped over Ivan's special effect and I had to go back for it and so it was narrated that you know the, the attack went to the arm, and so that. You see, in in my day when you played RuneQuest, the only special effect was impale if you rolled under twenty percent of the attack. <laughs> yeah, it was so, it yeah, was simpler it, then. It's, yes. Yeah, new you, newfangled <laughs> special effects. Yeah. But uh, but generally speaking, you don't have the option of of choosing location or removing the location right. very much, and uh, or different special effects like attacking twice or whatnot. So. Yeah, initially I, I thought that was you know it was going to be you know one of those things where like you know you help people like constantly prematurely imagine why well, hit him in the head. I try it, you know, um, my players do that all the time now. My my young my young D and D players always want to like attack something's eye or his head or whatever. And you know here it tells you exactly what you hit, yeah. so there's not that kind of narration sort of thing. There's not that narrative freedom necessarily. However, you can uh, it's clear that you can you can justify well, why even if you're hitting trying to hit their head why did you hit them because the guy's not stupid he's gonna yeah. you know, instinctively Actually, try to protect it the, the reason as i recall reading back you know all those years ago is the reason why the arms and legs get in the way so much is because these guys were big and in, into the society for creative anachronism and uh, their experience in the sca mock combats was arms and legs were the most frequently hit targets in melee. So mm -hmm. this is no accident. It was right. no accident. Yeah. Right. No, it, it's, it's really true. And, and sparring deeply informs the rules about how mm -hmm. unarmed opponents interact with armed opponents, about uh, how grip works and, and what it does, and interrupting someone's tempo and closing the range, you know, different, different size weapons at all. It all something that you can actually experience in, in sparring with with weapons um we might argue about approaches you know right. and uh but generally speaking y you find that this is a normal human defensive yep. measure regardless and uh and most attacks go to where you're looking which means most attacks are aimed at the head but uh um, right. and then when you get tricky you start faking toward the head but going for the leg and and, so and, there's, and, there's because your, and because of you, and because of you, in a normal stance, legs are going to be the, one of the things you protect the least. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a it's going to be a good target for you to like whack them, yep. right? Right. As we found out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you guys have had a slightly different experience, maybe because none of you have a shield. You haven't gone up against anybody with a shield. And the incredible utility of that protective implement is amazing in this game. The things that you can things that you can do with it um so the uh, the two-handed weapon user who goes into battle without it certainly feels its lack uh, right anyway but, gents i hope you had some fun i hope it wasn't too grim and and dark 
No. It was cool. It was just good it was, and dark enough. It was it, don't so I don't I, like I know you were painting a picture, but the only picture I was receiving is Temple of Doom. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Like I was waiting for a moment where Amal rules the world and he reaches and rips out a heart. Laram, That's what I was waiting for. Laram, Laram, Laram. Laram. Okay, so next time we'll have heart removal. And, That's right. Uh, That's right. And short hopefully round will not, show up. Hopefully, hopefully not Brahms. But you know. uh, that was that was strong. It's, there was a strong sense of the uh, the, uh, the the temple of the snake in, in the Conan movie too. Yeah, like, that you know, too. Just yep. that sort of you know. That like sneaking around as these guys are clearly involved in some heinous ritual. So this is That's, paradise. You know, that, that sort of uh, you know. Hey, so is that. But well done. Prior, prior, prior to that scene, that just sort of sneaking around and like you yeah. know, silent, you know, communication, all sort of, sort of thing. And that sort of thing. Awesome. Like it's, vibe to regardless it. of the setting, cultists are just unnerving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they're always so intent on what they're doing. Yep. Yes. And, uh, it was nice. It was nice to have that. Yeah, it was nice to have that moment where, like, literally, we couldn't, you know, control ourselves because of you know, just how awful yeah. it was. Like, you know, I found I hate these people more and more each session. <laughs> they become more and more bad. It was all in character, right? These are oh yeah, these are barbaric herders, you know. Yeah. All right, guys. That's what I, I don't know when we'll have a chance anymore. to play this again, but uh, but when we do, the setting will be there waiting for us. <laughs> And I don't know how long it'll last, but I would love to put this on pause because I'm enjoying this. I would like this not to be a stop, oh, yeah. but a pause. No. I like it. I like it. Yep. Glad to hear it. And uh, hey, you just want to sure to get to make it happen. He just wants to fast forward to like where Brom gets the girl. You know. Oh, I, I already read the last two pages of the book. I can tell you how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> I will kill. I will strangle you through the screen, little man. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, as always fun playing with you guys. Um, yeah, I'm here. Thanks, Thanks for guys. getting up early, Take guys. Care. Take care. Take care. Good night. Talk to you guys later. Bye.